in today's video, we are going on an SF food tour with my friends Calvin and Tim. I'm literally so excited because there's a bunch of new places that we're gonna check out and also some older places that I've been wanting to try for a really long time. But before I drive to the city, I actually need to clean up a little bit with these eco-friendly, refillable Blue Land cleaning products. These are not only sustainable, affordable, and cute, but also extremely easy to use. You get these forever bottles, fill them up with warm water, drop one of the tablets into the water bottle, wait a couple minutes for the tablet to dissolve, and you're good to go. I got the Clean Essentials Kit, which comes with a multi-surface cleaner, a glass and mirror cleaner, a bathroom cleaner, and foaming hand soap. And as someone who washes their hands so much, like literally 20 times a day, I would go through so many bottles of soap, and I always hated throwing away the single-use plastic bottles that they came in. It was specifically really hard for me to find refillable foaming hand soap, so I'm literally so glad that I found Blue Land. There's no single-use plastic in any of their components, from bottles, tablets, wrappers, and even shipping. All their cleaners work really well, are EPA certified, and very affordable as their refill tablets are only $1.55 to $2 each. On top of that, you can click the link in the description and get 15% off, and I'd highly recommend doing that because they don't do this very often. You can get their starter kits, which are already at a discount, and then get 15% off with my link for even more savings. So thank you to Blue Land for sponsoring this video, and now let's head over to the city. All right, so for our first stop, we went to Arsicult Bakery. Or wait, we forgot to ask oh, them how to wait. pronounce the name. <laughs> I thought this place was called Arsicult, but they kept saying that it's called Arsicult. Is that what? Arsicult. Ar Arsicult. No. Arsicult. Yeah, there's a debate on how to pronounce this. So we're going to ask the workers. It's Arsicult. Oh. Wait, it's Arsicult. There's no Arsicult. It's like it's Arsicult. Ars Arsicult. Yeah. Arsicult. Arsicult. Okay, so verdict is that it's pronounced Arsicult. The more you know. So I was closer though. You guys were off. Well, <laughs> fine. Anyway, this place is really well known for their croissants. Like, they're known to have some of the best croissants in San Francisco. And it looks so good, so buttery, and so flaky. Like, I don't know if you guys can see all those layers. All right, let's break this apart. Oh. Oh, wait, this is the ham and cheese. I thought this was the almond one. <laughs> but this makes sense that it's the ham and cheese. Mmm. 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 The croissant is perfectly crispy on the outside and it has so many buttery layers on the inside and then the savory ham and cheese combination it works so perfectly together mm. My goodness. Next up, we have the Queen Amon, and it looks so buttery and flaky, and it has this like crystallized sugary top. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So sweet, flaky, and buttery. And that crystallized top, imagine kind of like a pommier butterfly cookie. It's basically kind of like this. Oh my god, it's so good. This is the morning bun. Oh, whoa. Oh my gosh. It's kind of like a cinnamon roll ish, but not quite. Mmm. There's definitely a cinnamon flavor to it, but then there's like a tiny hint of this orangey citrus flavor that helps cut through the sweetness. So it feels like it's not too sweet. This is the almond croissant. This looks glorious. I already feel my fingers getting buttery from it. Let's try to break it apart. Oh, oh my God. Again, with all those flaky layers. And then there's that, I believe like an almond crust type of thing. Mmm, mmm, it's good. So flaky, so buttery, so many layers. I feel like I'm saying the same stuff for everything, but honestly, it's just so good. This one is just really not too sweet. Like, oh, I've had a lot of almond croissants that are really sweet, which I don't really mind because I like sweet stuff, but this one actually is really not too sweet. Wow, everything was so good. Top two are the almond croissant and the queen of mine. All right, so now we are at Kiss of Matcha in the Richmond district. They're known for this matcha bamboo parfait, which comes in this really cute bamboo cup, but they ran out of the cup, unfortunately. So we went ahead and got the Kiss of Matcha parfait, and I got it with matcha soft serve, which they use ceremonial grade matcha for. And then it has like two different kinds of mochi, I think. And then there's some cornflakes, red bean, as well as a chocolate croffle. There's literally a croffle in this parfait. Oh, Tim brought his lactate because he's gonna need it. <laughs> Thank God I'm not lactose intolerant. Knock on wood. Whoa. Oh my gosh, it's so strong. That's like the strongest matcha soft serve I've ever had. All right, we're gonna try one of these mochis. Mm. 
The mochi is like nice and chewy, but it's also not as chewy and bouncy as normal mochi. It's kind of almost if mochi and jelly kind of mix. It kind of has like a jelly-ish type of vibe to it. And then here's the other type of mochi. Mm. That one is like normal mochi, so it's like very chewy and bouncy. And then the other one, that one's the warabi mochi. Sometimes I buy these like matcha soft serve parfaits and the mochi is like hard and just not good. So both of these mochis are done very well. Mm. Mm. It's very crispy on the outside and it has some chocolate, which is nice. I wasn't quite sure about the concept of putting a croffle on a matcha parfait, but I feel like it actually works decently well, surprisingly. So if you guys like strong matcha flavors, definitely check this out and see if they have the bamboo cup when you come because I'm still trying to track that down. Tell us if it's good. It's really creamy. I think I taste some uh, dairy in there. I'm not sure. Oh no! <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at these people. Just San Francisco things. So now we are at Bread Belly and I've actually been wanting to go to this place for literally years, but I've never made it out here because their hours are kind of hard to catch. Today I got their egg coffee. It looks super fluffy on top and it's actually very light. Literally, it feels like there's no liquid in here and it served with a spoon. So let me just try this fluffy foam. Whoa, Ooh. oh my gosh. It's like sweet and creamy, but very foamy and light at the same time. And there's like some salt in there. I don't know if they put like salt flakes. And then you get the bitterness of the coffee. Oh, I think I was supposed to just mix it from the beginning because when I drink the coffee on the bottom, it's really bitter. Okay. <laughs> we also got their kaya toast, which this is the thing that I've been wanting to come here to try. Kaya is basically a jam that is made of pandan and it's very popular in Malaysia or Singapore or both. Both. <laughs> wow, this thing is actually very hefty. Ooh, look how fluffy and spongy that bread looks. Mm. The bread is so like buttery and fluffy. And then the kaya jam it has such a strong like panda and like coconutty flavor. And it goes so well with the toast. It's actually really good. It's so creamy and pandany. And then it pairs so well with that buttery fluffy bread. They sprinkle a little bit of salt flakes so that you get this like salty note that contrasts the sweetness of the kaya. Wow, definitely recommend. So we are at Campo Kitchen in Chinatown and I haven't been to this place in years, but I used to come here all the time. I just remember their Tassiu barbecue pork is so good, so juicy, so tender. And so of course, that's what we had to get. So the meat looks super good. It's like glistening in the light. Mm. It's so tender, pairs perfectly with the rice, nicely marinated. It has like a sweetness to it, just like Tassiu should have. And they always include some steamed cabbage, which also soaks up that fatty pork juice. Oh, so good. Mm. Mm. I feel like this is a Chinatown hidden gem because not that many people know about it But I've been coming here for years and it's so good And then they also have this huge slab of pork just hanging and we were like we have to order that Here we have the pork belly and it has the crispy top. That is the best part mm. 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 So salty so you need that rice so fatty and tender and then you get that crispy skin on top Oh my gosh And then the best part about these rice plates is that it has like all these fatty juices and it drips all over the rice And it makes the rice so flavorful and comforting and delicious. If you guys are ever in SF Chinatown, definitely hit up the spot. So underrated.
Okay, so the music was really loud, so I couldn't really vlog, but this is a new place called Shugi's, and they use ingredients that would have contributed to food waste, such as irregular or surplus produce. Super cool concept, and the vibes were immaculate. We ordered the garlic knots, which were topped with chimichurri and ricotta fluff. They had a really good garlic flavor, and the dough was nice and fluffy, with a crisp on the bottom. The ricotta fluff was so creamy and light. Next, we got the fried pickle kakiyage, which came with shiso ranch, served in this mouth dipping cup, which I thought was really fun. It was super light and crispy, kind of like a tempura batter. Now onto the pizza, which they call trash pie. Get it? Cause like, they use excess food to make it. Yeah, anyway, we ordered the mushroom pie, which had charred, crispy shallots, and green sauce. The first thing I noticed was how crispy it was. The crust was very, very thin. It was mushroomy, and the chard added like a kind of roasted Brussels sprouts flavor that I loved. We also got this one, which had pepperoni, honey, and chili. And again, super duper crispy. The pepperoni was really flavorful. It brought umaminess with a bit of spice, the tomato sauce had a tang to it, and the honey added a hint of sweetness. Pro tip, they charge extra for ricotta fluff, but since it already comes with the garlic knots, we just used the fluff from that to complement the pizza. Overall, a super fun and cool spot to check out with delicious food and helping prevent food waste, which is a huge plus. As our last stop, we walked over to one of our favorites, Garden creamery. They have so many unique and amazing flavors, but my personal favorite is the ube pandan. Anyway, comment below what your favorite food was from the video because I love reading those. And yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you get notified when I upload. Give this video a thumbs up and here's today's comment shout out. Thank you so much for your support. And if you want to be in the next video's comment shout out, make sure you comment something down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!